Let me tell you about a story about a kid I once knew. He was the youngest of 10 kids. His dad was a pastor. He always loved going to church. You know, he always remembered he was the first one in, last one out every Sunday. He always dreamed about, you know, serving the Lord and, you know, being a pastor, you know, like his dad. But then at the age of 12, his dad passed away. And he remembered the hurt and just the pain and being upset with God about why would you take his dad away? He didn't know where to look to, where to turn. And so he ended up getting caught up with the wrong people. And his life changed from there. He remembers getting in trouble one day and um, his uncle coming over and beating him with a water hose. He vowed that day that he'll never, he never wanted to feel that hopeless again or not being able to protect himself. So the first thing he did, he got up and he knew friends that wasn't living a good life and he became a new person and people didn't really recognize him. Ended up getting kicked out of school. When he came back, he was like, man, I, I want to change, but he just didn't know how. He felt like he went too far one way to the dark side and um, continued to live a life that was not controllable. His 10th grade year of high school, he remembered going there excited. Man, I'm gonna change my life. I'm gonna be a better person this year. But then he ended up getting expelled again from school for beating someone with a bat. And he remembers sitting down in the principal's office and she had two folders in her hand, one with his referrals and one with his grades. And she looked at him and was like, if you look at the referrals and look at the grades, you would think that these people were two different people. He just felt like he was hopeless. He had no purpose, and he was one of those guys that, man, he wanted to protect himself at all costs, so he didn't care whom he hurt. His 11th grade year, he met this girl. He really, really liked, liked this girl, and um, finally, you know, this girl was like, she liked him back, and they started dating. She began to see his lifestyle and was like, whoa, you seem like you're a nice guy, but man, when I hang out with you, it's just, there's something different there. You know, you can't continue to live this lifestyle, you know, of selling drugs and doing things like that. So he started to try to change his life, but that temptation was always there, always there hunting him. He knew that the road that he had, was heading down wasn't a good one. It was like a couple years later his girlfriend came to Calvary and she said this pastor named Mark was just teaching about God and God's love and how God had a plan for you and had a purpose and man you need to go there and hear him but he was like you know where was God when he went through all this trouble here down his life she continued to beg him to come to church with her. So to acquire her up, he was like, okay, I'll go with you. If you just leave me alone just once. He remember walking through the doors and just seeing all these people smiling and, you know, didn't understand why. People hugging and he went to shake one guy's hand and, um, the guy was like, no, I'm a hugger, and gave him a hug, and he was just like, ah, uh, you know, that's weird. And everybody sat down, and here's this pastor, Pastor Mark, coming up and start the teaching. After that, you know, that service, he remembers sitting there like, how did this guy know all this stuff about me? Someone had to tell him what he did. And for a while, he thought his girlfriend told Pastor Mark everything about him and what he was doing. And after church that day, he told her, I'm never coming back to this church. Don't never ask me to come back. And I did, and just leave me alone. 
But that next Sunday, he called and was like, hey, you going back to that church? They drove there and the same thing happened. But this time, Pastor Mark did an altar call. And he said, Pastor Mark said, I'm gonna give everyone 30 seconds to respond. And he said, them 30 seconds felt like 30 minutes as he turned and tossed in a chair and uncomfortably trying to not to stand or trying to run down there to the altar call. After the 30 seconds, he got up and was like, this time I'm never coming back. And his girlfriend looked at him and was like, we need to talk. And she told him, you know, I cannot continue to live like this. You're gonna have to move out. So as they got home, he was packing his clothes and he began to cry out, upset at God, at everything that God took. And he was like, you left me. You know, you, why did you do all these things? You took my dad, now you're taking my girlfriend. He just had a real conversation with God that day. And he remembered God saying, I never left you, nor have I ever forsaken you. And God began to show him every time that he spared his life. And he remembered Pastor Mark saying one day, one that Sunday, that those who are in Christ is a new creation. And he told God, if you change my life, I promise you I serve you for the rest of my life. And that young man sits right here in this chair, changed by the blood of Jesus Christ. My life has changed tremendously. My girlfriend, who brought me to church, is now my wife. I am changed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's no other life I'd rather live than the life I'm living now, serving him and furthering his kingdom for his glory.